remember this. I heard back from the seller. I had to go back and forth a couple times. I don't know if I didn't make a video of this, but this started working after I put a a fresh 1.6 volt double A in here instead of a um, 1.5 volt used one in here. It worked, but it is very low, short range. With the antenna all the way out, it was relatively clear, but very weak at about five feet. Beyond that, it started breaking up, uh, hissing and everything else. And when I went to the other end of the house, basically gone. I had my son Tommy monitor it. So this is the antenna here, which I'm going to measure right now. It's, I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but from the base to that is antenna is 16 inches long if you stretch it right out. All right. Um, all right. What did I say? 16 inches. Now, naturally, when this is hanging. Like if it was going to be in Uncle Dorkle or whatever. I don't even know if you can see the antenna wire. I don't see it in the viewfinder at all. But I'm thinking of making the antenna longer. The problem is I don't know what the frequency is, but that should not matter. This is a receiver. So if I put a longer antenna on this and perhaps put some kind of a whip antenna on this, essentially they, the seller told me to keep it, so it's really mine now. And it's worth 250 because the microphone alone is worth that. Because there is, of course, as I said, uh, even the um, transmitter would have a voltage output. Uh, would you like me to prove that to you? I have never done it, you know. Would you like me to prove it? <laughs> All right. Let's get our cord out. Here's our good old reliable cord. Single tip monaural, which is what this microphone is. All right. Hang on a minute. We've got to get hooked up here. All right. You can see the green wire is a shield, the negative, goes down to the batter, uh, to the meter probe here. Uh, the red wire, which is the center conductor of the shielded wire this is shielded wire you know uh the center conductor goes to the uh positive which is right over here we're going to put the meter on it dc okay all right this is plugged in and the battery should still be in let's turn this on There we go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 2.3 volts. There is your DC bias voltage. Okay, so that is why this mic here, which is a condenser mic, did not work on the ICO 147A, nor did it work on the oscilloscope. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that. Now this, honest to God, this is the first time I ever tried this on camera. I did not rehearse this. 
If I was wrong, and it didn't, I would be the first to tell you, oops, I screwed up, I was wrong. But there it is. Turn the transmitter off. Okay. All right, so. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you ever buy one of these things and you want to use it in your little portable tape recorder or um, whatever else you may have that you want to stick a microphone into, it better have the bias voltage coming out of it. Otherwise, it will not work. It will not work, ladies and gentlemen. This old tinkerer can't learn to stop aggravating people. <laughs> He's always got to prove a point. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just wanted to show you something else here. Here is my ICO 147A, okay? What I've got it right now, I've got it connected down to my voltmeter, okay? This is the input. All right? The reason I have that on there is I want to verify... It has a blocking capacitor, so you don't have any grid voltages coming out and upsetting your input. Okay? I'm going to try something. Now, you're going to get a hum because this is not shielded. This is shielded. This is a oscilloscope, I showed you this before, shielded wire, BNC, that uh, goes up to the ICO 147 up there. And try to move this slow so you don't get sick because I can't get the tripod in this position here. All right, no DC, no DC voltage. Let's see if we're getting any AC voltage. We're getting nine tenths of a volt AC voltage. Okay, that's not a problem. Okay, all right, all right. Now you're getting a hum because I'm. This is high impedance, and the reason we're getting all this hum is because I'm going through these open leads, which are actually acting like antennas and picking up, you know, hear it? And I've got the gain down pretty low here. Hear it? All right. Not as bad now, see? Okay, I just want to verify, we'll turn this meter off. I want to verify that there is no DC on here because I, I know I restored this and replaced all the capacitors in the ICO 147A. But I want to make sure, you know, that I wasn't getting any uh, uh, DC voltage coming down the line here. Okay, I'm going to hook up this microphone. I'm going to make the same test that I made before. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the bias voltage from this while the microphone is plugged, is clipped on to here. Now, there's going to be some hum because I'm going to be using clip leads. I'm going to set you on a tripod. But I want to tell you what I'm going to do first. Paying attention now, boys and girls. And ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put the ground lead, which is the shield, onto the rim of the microphone. I'm also going to connect up the shield, which is going to be the negative for the bias voltage, which is coming out of here, onto the black lead and the rim or barrel of this plug. And the positive will go to the tip. I will speak into the microphone. And then I will add the bias and continue talking. And you will hear the microphone and my voice. 
Again, I have not done this on camera. It's a matter of theory. It has to work. Now, it's not too often that I'll do something without trying it out first. But I have to do this to rest everybody's mind and put that their minds at ease and my own mind at ease. I had a lot of people that agreed with me on this, but I don't want any hard feelings, and um, I basically just want to make a point, and also to show you. Uh, don't throw your microphone away if it doesn't work in a regular amplifier like a stereo, if you might want to do that, uh, because these are made for, as I said, for, um, they need a little voltage, usually a, a volt and a half to two and a half volts, or thereabouts, Okay. Okay, so let me get you on a tripod here, and let's get started, okay? Um, all right, let me try to get some room here so you can see what I'm doing, okay? Leads along, so you are going to get a hum. Okay, what I got here, and hope I explain myself clearly is here's the negative of the input lead coaxial going to the ICO 147A signal tracer, which in this case is being used as an audio amplifier. Okay? Also, there's a black clip lead going here to the shield of the wire that is plugged into the transmitter. Okay? Transmitter is at this time turned off. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is bring this red lead from the ICO 147A to this. I was told that somebody had said that this microphone is shorted. No, uh, it's a low impedance device. And that's why the hum is not there. Okay. I got the volume on the ICO 147A about three quarters up. I had it down about one quarter before. The microphone is now hooked up. Hello, 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 hello. All right, nothing. All right, let me get my chair closer. We'll turn the transmitter on. Okay, I'm going to take this white center conductor lead, which is going to this gray coax, which, as I showed you, is going to the transmitter, and I'm going to supply the two-point-something volts to the hot lead, which is going to power up this microphone. Because the ICO 147A input to the grid has a blocking capacitor in it, this DC voltage will not influence the ICO amplifier. Are you ready, boys and girls and ladies and geraniums? I'm going to try to speak into this microphone without holding it because I want to hold this thing so you can see it. I'm looking in the viewfinder. Can you see that? Okay. All right. I'm going to hold it. Now, it may hum a little. You may hear clicking and static because I'm, you know, trying to make contact. I'm going to be talking now. One, two, three, four. I'm going to make contact now. One, two, three, four, one. Just a minute. The wire came off. One, two, three. I'm blowing in the microphone. Hear it? I'm going to take the wire off. All right, I'm going to put it on again. One, two, three, four. All right, if that's not approved, not 
proof enough, I'm going to turn the ICO all the way up. <coughs> now I'm going to resupply the <coughs> bias voltage. First, without the bias voltage. Let me get this lead. I have to hold it down with my finger, but the microphone is low impedance. If it was high impedance, it would be humming like a banshee with my finger across it, like it did with the meter, because the meter is high impedance. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Bias is on. Bias is on. Bias is on. Bias is off. Bias is off. Bias is off. Bias is on. Bias is on. That's it. Over and out. Okay. All right. That's the story there, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls. All right. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Okay. That concludes this part of the video. Okay. Now. Now that we got that straightened out. I think I still have a battery in here. Yes. Happens to be a sunbeam, but it's uh, 1.6 volts. Oh. Man, these things are hard to get in close. Okay. Um, there was a couple things I wanted to do with this. If I can get the range to work. First of all, I want to make a lo much longer receiving antenna. Um, I think I said 16 inches. I want to go around. I want to replace this. So I, I'll open this up and if I can solder on a heavier wire. Not that an antenna needs to be a thicker wire. It's going to radiate RF regardless. Uh, but I want to make a better receiving antenna. So maybe a little longer wire going around the inside of Dorkel. Now the disadvantage of that is all these electronics in here. Okay, if I ran the wire, I would probably run it around the perimeter and down, but it's going to probably pick up some interference from the electronics. So I would have to experiment, and what I would do is, where is my, here it is. What I would probably do is to strip back this hair-thin wire which is on the, is an antenna, add some wire to it, and temporarily take some of these clips and just clip them around here and experiment with noise and see if it picks up any noise. If it does, I can't use it. So the seller was nice enough to say, keep the thing. Originally, the seller wanted me to keep it and just refund me $2. I said, no, that's... The thing is useless. It's, I was honest with him. I told him it's only good for five feet. Beyond that, it was useless. Antenna stretched out completely. I even stretched out the microphone cord completely in case that acted as an antenna, although I don't think it would because it's got a shield on it. But nonetheless, I tried everything. I put fresh batteries in here. And um, so the sellers asked me to ship it back and say return to sender and, I, and asked me if I kept the original package. I said no, I threw it out, which I did. So, the seller wrote back and says, well, it's $11.49 with free shipping, okay? The seller told me, I'll, I'll refund you $9. And I'll keep the shipping, even though he had free shipping. It did cost them money to send it out. Regardless, it's all in the price. I think that's very fair. So $2.49 is what this cost me in effect. It's only good for five feet, so I cannot use it for this project here. So... That means I agreed to it, and that means I got to I got to try to modify this. Okay, I was thinking about something else. Sometimes my mind goes off a little bit, but I'm off anyway. So, <laughs> um, so I'm 
figuring perhaps see if I could find out what frequency this is transmitting at. It's in the FM band, frequency modulation, for those of you who don't know what FM stands for. But I don't think it's in the FM broadcast band 88 to 108 megacycles. I think it's a lot higher than that. It could even be somewhere around 145 or something like that. So what I'm going to try to do now, and I doubt it would work, and I'm doing too many things at once here, the lodestar frequency counter that I have goes up to 1.2 gigahertz. All right. But I don't know if this transmitter will kick in the frequency counter. In other words, it probably needs a lot of signal. I cannot use my oscilloscope because this is a 100 megahertz scope. This is a 60. So the frequency is too high and I will not get anything on that. Otherwise, I would use my oscilloscope. So what I was going to do when I'm, I've got, I saw a YouTube video on this very same model, exact name. The guy opened it all up, and there isn't really all that much in it. He showed the tuning cap inside, and um, he had the uh, transmitter apart, and there was no parent antenna. Uh, I need to know what frequency this is putting out. I'm thinking of maybe putting an antenna on this. Now, this would be worn on my belt. But if I can get some kind of an antenna on this, <clears throat> I may, limit, may not even have to extend this antenna at all. This may be perfectly good. Because the transmitter doesn't have any antenna. And I don't think the microphone would act as an antenna because... It's grounded. It's a shield. A shield uh, is plugged in. So your shield isn't going to transmit the signal. At least I don't think so. But if I can find out, and I, can't, I don't have a schematic of this, to find out where to tap in on this circuit to add an external antenna, maybe I can put a little tiny um, a whip antenna on this probably six or ten inches long. That could literally be clipped on my belt and the whip antenna could be under my jacket or under my shirt where it won't be seen when I'm doing the skit. And the microphone would be under, you know, under my shirt co uh, collar or something. I need to get the gain up if this is going to do any good at all. And... Um, I doubt, you know, I have to get right on top of it. You heard me when I'm using this. In order to get any sound out of here, I need to be on top of the microphone. I can't very well do that because then that defeats the whole purpose of using a microphone to begin with. The reason for the wireless mic is only one reason for using it, okay? If in case you don't remember what I said before or weren't watching some of the videos, because there's so many of them, is if I can successfully make or find a circuit that would control the Gordo's board, which in turn controls the mouth solenoid by way of speech coming out of this amplifier here, which would be introduced by the wireless mic, that is the reason for that, and I don't need, when I'm doing the skit, I don't need to be having sound coming out of these speakers, because when you're doing a skit, my voice is going into this microphone to operate the voice-activated circuit to activate the mouth solenoid. I can have the speakers turned off, 
And my voice coming through from me, the camera mic will pick it up. And it would be the same as coming out of Dorkle. So the only reason for using this is to activate the mouth solenoid by way of voice. Otherwise, I don't need to use this at all. But anyways, I'm getting very long on this. Let me try one thing before we end this video. I'm not going to pull these things apart. If I can get to find out whether this is, I think this is a uh, microphone output. Uh, it was suggested by, I think, Sky, Sky Carl, and uh, I haven't heard from him lately, but I hope he wasn't offended because it wasn't meant to be. Uh, I proved again, but I'm not going to keep hashing over it on the microphones. But anyways, uh, he suggested plugging this into the M Audio and Tommy's, and I did. And that's what I did. I did that off camera. And we plugged it into his S Assure SM58 microphone input. If this was line output, this would distort like hell. Okay, overload it. This is microphone output. This is not line level output. That is why, one reason why it will not work here. I watched a YouTube video, and I think somebody has commented too. In the comments, are, I'm, I'm sorry if I don't get to you all. It's taken me a very long time to do anything. Um, you got to turn one of these on first. And I'm not sure. I think you turned the receiver on. I don't know. But let's put the receiver on. No light. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the transmitter on. All right. Maybe you got to turn the transmitter on. I mean the receiver on first. Hmm. Well, right now the light isn't working, and there is a 9-volt battery in here. I didn't take the batteries out. I don't know. Right now it's not working, okay? The lights are not on. The lights were on. Uh, but there's a certain sequence, and I tuned this. What I did is I set... Um... I took the receiver and put it in the bedroom, and I went out until the light was almost out, which is just a few feet away, and then I tuned this to the light lit the brightest, okay? But right now, the light is on very, very, very faintly there. You might be able to see it, and this one's a little brighter. I don't know. They lit better before. Uh, it's temperamental. There might be something loose in here. So, um, okay. I can't seem to uh, get them. They were working before. I really don't know. I'm going to turn them off. This thing is confusing. It shouldn't make any difference, but for some reason, you got to turn one on first before the other one. I tried them both ways, and it didn't do it. But anyways, let me try one more thing here. Hang on. Okay, this is the Lodestar. We're plugged in to the UHF jack. Um, the HF is good for 15 megahertz, I guess. UHF goes from... i got to look at the magnifying glass. Uh, uh, 10 megahertz to 1.2 gigs. All right, and let's see... I never remember. It don't really tell you out and in. It's either UHF is out or UHF is in. It doesn't give you the symbol. It gives it to you over here on the attenuator. Uh, the attenuator times one is out. Okay, you don't want no attenuation. Okay, and this is the power. This is a load star 5270. 
that was given to me for a good by a good friend, uh, Don Mangold. I haven't heard from him in a long time. I, I hope he's okay. Um, he gave me this along with a lot of other equipment for the cost of shipping only. Uh, anyways, so I got, I'm into the UHF jack. I'm just getting random uh, frequency now. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to take and wrap this like that. Okay, just tie it around here. And I'm going to turn the transmitter on. No. All right, obviously there's not enough coming out of that transmitter to... Um, make it work. And a sniffer coil, well, I don't know how many turns it would need because I don't have first of all I don't have a grid dip meter I used to have one years ago when I had my attic workshop but I sold I, I sold that to many 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 years ago and every time you want to get one on eBay they're very very expensive and they never 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 have the coils a grid dip meter without the coils is useless uh, so I would really need to know the frequency so I can wind a coil um, for it and then put a coil on the end of this so, let's see. It's on. It's on, but the light isn't lit. And I don't think the receiver would have anything to do with that. But let's turn it on. Anyways. Well, I did something. Let me turn the receiver off here. No, that had nothing to do with it. Receiver's off. But it's all over the place because it's not coupled good. All right, so in must be UHF. I think there's just not enough RF coming out of the transmitter. So you can't settle on a proper frequency. It looks like 421 megacycles. 419, it's all over the place. Now I'm wondering if it's the microphone. Let me just see if I talk. Move the microphone. Tap the microphone. That does change it. No, it's still up. It was 400 and something, now it's 500 and something. So, that's just random. I turned it off, by the way. Um, what I'm going to do, as soon as I can find out, i got to find out what frequency this thing is transmitting at. And it, I can't find any information on, on this at all. I don't have any equipment. I'm sure there is expensive equipment out there that, like a spectrum analyzer, which I'd love to own, but never, never, never can afford it. Um, by the way, uh, my good buddy Mike picked up a working spectrum analyzer that goes up to several gigahertz for 50 bucks at the ham auction. Ooh, because I didn't have that kind of money. I'd love to have a spectrum analyzer, and that would scan it and then you'd know what frequency this is and i i need to find out i need to get a schematic of this so i know where to put a little antenna on it i think if i put an antenna on this being that this is the transmitter but if i was to put an antenna on this i would not need to extend the receiver antenna which is good because it won't pick up a lot of interference the longer the antenna is the more it'll pick up other interferences from inside a dorkel or wherever this is located um, and
and you get a lot more range out of it. If this was line level output, the first thing I would do, because it's not line level output, if it was, I've seen the inside of this by that YouTube video. I don't know who the person was, but if you uh, probably type in this name here, the exact name that uh, Kanjin, uh, KM208, you'll see the video. It shows the inside of this. It looks like it's got a little little circuit board. It looks like there's this plug is soldered in, I would get rid of this plug and have a cord coming out with an RCA at the end that would plug directly in the back of my amplifier. But it is not line level out. So I may not modify this, but I want to get an antenna on this, and I need to know the frequency of this. And probably the only way, maybe I can find out if my buddy Mike, uh, he, he retired. The work he retired from is repairing professional wireless microphones. I mean, the stuff that studios use not the junk that we use here <laughs> and he does all he used to do uh surface mount soldering and all that stuff the tiny tiny stuff he, he's almost as old as me by a year or two younger and he's got excellent excellent eyesight and uh he might be able to stick it on in proximity of a spectrum analyzer and but I won't be seeing him tonight because we are going to KFC instead of the pizza house tonight. My wife's choice. I already spoke to Mike last week and the ham auction did take place. So, anyways, that is it. I'm sorry for the long-winded video, but I did want to show you this here and my ideas as to what I want to do with this now that I got most of the money back and it's pretty useless at five feet range it's useless beyond five feet five feet is not going to be very good but it can be used on Dorkel but it still, at five feet, you move around at all and you lose the signal or it gets hissy and staticky. So we can't have noises coming through this and making the mouth move without vocal coming through, if we can get that circuit worked out. I got Jim Asbell working on a circuit uh, when he gets a chance, he's going to test it out and see if we can do anything with this. My, my good buddy, Jim Asbell. He's done a lot for me, and he's helped me out a lot, and I appreciate it. In fact, a lot of my viewers have helped me out a lot since I got back into electronics, so I don't want to leave any of them people out because everyone's great and has been very, very helpful to me. And I appreciate everyone's uh, help recently and in the past. All right, enough of this chatter. Ah, turn off this. It goes off. Nobody home. I turn off this.